So four years ago, I showed you guys my black soldier fly box design, and that thing worked really well, but I've come up with a way simpler solution that I think that anybody can do anywhere in the world, and it's just a lot easier to set up. You can set it up in like five minutes, actually. So if you're interested in raising free food for your chickens, pigs, fish, any other animal that eats insects, reptiles, they have a fat and protein ratio that's extremely good for animals and they can be fed off of just food waste. So anything that you're throwing away, literally anything, it could even be cake, meat, dairy, anything can go in this box and they will devour it. And they're actually even used in, in uh, Asia, I've seen pig farms, they'll process manure and get rid of it. So it's pretty spectacular. And in the US, there's about 50% of our food that is grown here is wasted and thrown into a landfill. Well, what if instead of that, it was all taken to soldier fly facilities that would grow them out, producing this very high quality fat and protein, and then they could be fed to chickens and pigs and a lot less grain would have to be grown for them conventionally, which when you grow grain conventionally, you're tilling the soil, you're adding pesticides, herbicides, toxifying the land, stuff that's not good. This is why I recommend buying organic feed for your animals if you can. So it's just a really fantastic solution for a lot of different things, and I would love to see it implemented at a larger scale. But for us home growers, homesteaders, small scale farmers, even larger scale farmers, I really recommend that you check out this type of a system and start to learn more about it. So behind me here is my brand new chicken coop that I built with my friend Matt, and it's actually built from a lot of the wood that I chopped down creating the silva pasture in this little lot behind me here. So I think I only spent about three, 350 on this coop that can fit over 30 birds in there. And now I have black copper morans, I have guinea fowl and turkeys, in addition to my other laying flock that lives in the dog kennel chicken coop that's still working amazingly. So I still recommend that option. Um, if you want a cheap, metal, very strong coop. So I'll show you all about this new bird stuff soon. And I've actually been working the last many months on a whole chicken masterclass, whether you're going to get your chicks shipped to you in the mail and brood them out, you're gonna incubate eggs, raise meat birds, how to kill and process the meat birds, how to do the cut-ups and process them into the drumsticks, the wings, so you just go right into your freezer and you have your own grocery store at home. Everything that you guys are gonna wanna know about raising your own birds from start to finish. And I've blended in Korean natural farming, Master Cho's amazing techniques for lowering your feed costs, increasing the health and nutrition of their feed. And there's even gonna be a group for this course, so we will be able to help each other. If you guys have questions, you're worried about a sick bird, I will be in there to help you guys. So I'm going forward, I'm trying to create a more of a community for us so that uh, we can all help each other become better growers, better farmers. So it's gonna be a really fantastic course full of information that's really not out there all in one place. And I'm bringing it to you guys soon. So if you want to know more about that and find out when it comes out, sign up in the email, sign up below, and I'll send you guys an email when that thing is ready to launch. So hope to see you guys in that course when I put it out. Now let's go ahead and check out the super simple soldier fly design. So all you're gonna need to raise black soldier fly is a tote. This is a famous yellow tote that you can get at Home Depot and they're all over the place. Then of course you're gonna need your food scraps to feed the black soldier fly. Anything goes guys, literally anything. In the past you've seen my design where I used ramps. You may have seen other people's designs where they use ramps, but that's just more complex, it's more difficult and I've discovered that this works just as well. And you'll notice I just cut these large slits all around the tote because the way that the black soldier fly work is the black soldier flies, they come in, they land on the food, they lay their eggs, the larva hatch, and they start eating all the food waste that you've put in there. And then they're gonna wanna pupate and turn into the fly. So when they do that, they don't wanna stay on all this food, they wanna come out into soil. So they're gonna try to climb out of this box, fall onto the ground and do their thing. Now, in the ramp system, it only gives them one location and they kind of go all over the place. So with these large slits cut everywhere, it allows them to just go anywhere and fall out. And then my chickens can free range, come and pick them up. So if you're doing an enclosed coop, it's the same thing. Or if you um, had a fish tank or something like that, 
maybe put the ramps on one side so they just fall out into the water or next to your uh, pig, pig barn or wherever. Set it up so they just fall out right there. Um, you of course could still use ramps if you'd like. So you can use a piece of wood, plastic, something like that to get them there. Um, you'll see a lot of people use PVC. So any of those options will work for you. But for me, how simple is this where you just need a tote, nothing else. And this works fantastic. Another thing that I used to recommend in the past was to use cardboard for the black soldier flies to lay their eggs inside the corrugated areas. But I haven't found that to be necessary because they just lay on top of the food waste. And I'll show you guys how many soldier fly are in here in a second. They're underneath this top layer. So you can go ahead and put a piece of cardboard over the top here. And, uh, or if you want, you can hang it from the top. But like I said, I haven't found that to be necessary. When I did this before, I was in San Diego, which is a very, very dry climate. And there's not as many soldier flies flying around. Uh, but in Tennessee, there's so much humidity and moisture that they're just everywhere. So there's no problem attracting them. But some tips to attract the flies is to make this as stinky as possible. So meat, dairy, fish, those type of things are really going to attract them to this. And once the black soldier flies get enough larvae in there, they're gonna dominate the box. But you'll see gnats and maybe some ants and other things, don't worry about that. They can all live together. Now, one of the reasons I like to have a, a, a lid like this is that rain won't get inside of here. I found that it's not good if it gets super, super wet in here. The larvae themselves already create a ton of moisture, so they don't need any extra. So what I've done is I've drilled a bunch of holes at the bottom of the tote as well so that liquid doesn't build up and just let it drain out. Now this is possible to do in the spring, the summer, and into the fall. But once we get colder temperatures, especially as we approach freezing, the, the soldier flies are not gonna come around anymore. And some of these larvae are gonna go into a dormant state and wait until the next spring to awaken, become the flies again, and start the life cycle all over again. So if you want, you can just leave your black soldier fly box alone, let it sit here all through winter, and let them come back out. And if you're in San Diego, you might want to do that just to encourage that, that population the next year to start up sooner. But here in Tennessee or in the south or places that get a lot of rainfall, I don't think that's necessary because in the native environment, there's just so many. So it's important when you cut your slits to make them wide enough that the flies can go in and the larva can come out and it doesn't really matter. You'll see other designs where they poke holes in this, they, do, they have PVC. Don't make it more complex than it needs to be. This is literally all you need, guys. A tote with slits cut into it. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on in there. So these, these are getting to the size about where they're gonna start to crawl up and out. And I've noticed it'll happen a lot of times in phases, right? Because flies are coming in, they're laying the eggs, and then that round of larva crawls up and out. So you may not see a constant flow of black soldier fly coming out all the time. And if you want, you could let your chickens dig in here and, and grab some stuff if they want. So I got a lot of, you know, some of my onions that rotted from my field are in here. Sweet potatoes that I had rooted that I didn't end up planting because I already had so many. Some, a little few rotted carrots are in here. All my chicken bones from eating chicken wings from the chickens that I raised recently. Um, pork bones from my pork that I raised. So you'll just keep adding food and keep adding and adding and adding, and they'll keep eating and crawling out. Thanks for hitting the like button, guys. And if you like this type of content, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, sign up for my email list down below if you wanna know when my chicken course comes out so you can learn a lot more cool techniques like this that are gonna save you money 